Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Belcher and today we will be talking about the brain science and stress. If I hold up this glass of water pictured, what do you think is the first question I'm gonna ask you about it? Half full or half empty, right? Wrong. The question I want you to think about is how heavy is this glass of water? So call it out in the class right now. How heavy do you think this glass of water is? I'll give you just a second to call it out. Most of you might give answers that range from around eight ounces to maybe 12 ounces. However, the absolute weight of this water doesn't matter. It depends on how long you hold it. If I hold it for just a minute, that's not a problem. If I hold it for an hour, I might have an ache in my arm. If I hold it for a day, you'll, you might have to call the ambulance. In each case, it's the same weight, but the longer I hold it, the heavier it becomes. And that's the same way it is with stress. If we carry our burdens around all the time, sooner or later, as the burden becomes increasingly heavy, we won't be able to carry it anymore. As with the glass of water, you have to put it down for a while and rest before holding it again. When we're refreshed, we can carry, the, carry on with the burden, holding stress longer and better each time with practice. To help us get started today, let's look at what some of your peers said when being asked, how do you let stress go? Hi guys, I'm Emma Day and I'm a junior here at Yorktown. Um, and today I was asked to talk about stress. So how do you let stress go and what are some healthy coping strategies? Um, personally, one thing that brings me a lot of joy when I am stressed is painting. Um, painting or drawing is one of the best ways to just have a creative outlet, um, having any kind of creative outlet when you are uh, stressed is a really good way to relieve the stress, to take your mind off of it, and maybe to express how you're feeling about it. Um, some other good, really healthy coping strategies could be um, just slowing down, taking a deep breath, and counting five things that are around you, you know, knowing that you're aware, knowing that you are safe where you are, and everything's gonna be okay. Um, some other people have other creative outlets such as baking. Um, you could also go on a nice walk and um, appreciate what's around you. Or if you're more of a talker like I am, you could definitely talk to a friend about what's going on. Hey guys, um, I'm Peyton Wormer. Uh, I'm a freshman. Well, when I'm stressed, I like to cope with physical and psychological challenging activities. Um, I might go swim or bike for a couple of hours, or I might just like stay at my house and solve a puzzle or the wordle for the day um, for the release of stress. Stress affects all people and all brains, regardless of age. However, because as a teen, your brain is still developing, stress impacts your brain differently and has a longer, deeper impact. As you probably already know, not all stress is bad. Stress only becomes a problem when a person doesn't get a break from stress, stressors, and doesn't have healthy ways to manage the stress. Stress helps you deal with life's challenges, to give your best performance, and to meet a tough or challenging situation with focus. Let's take another look at how some of your period answers the, answered the following questions. What are some good stressors? And what are signs or signals that could help us know the difference between good stress and when it is becoming unhealthy? What are some common stressors that teens face? Some big common stressors that teens face are uh, grades, especially grades in this year. We all wanna do our best. We all wanna feel like we are being appreciated. We want someone to recognize us and acknowledge us for how good we're doing. And we'll see maybe the average, you know, we all want to shoot for an A, we all want to get that A because then our grades are good. You know, they're not great, they're good. And um, having good grades is just so much pressure for a high school student. A lot of relationships too. I'm not talking about maybe, oh, your boyfriend broke up with you and now you're feeling stressed about it because you like Michael instead of Wyatt, you know? That's not what I'm talking about. This could be relationships with your friends, with your parents, especially your home life. If you have a bad relationship with your siblings, you don't have someone to go home and talk to, it could be very stressful sometimes. Um, if you have lost a loved one, like your mom or your dad, or maybe you've lost a pet recently, your grandma, your grandpa, um, any of these things can be big stress factors that could take away from school and then you get stressed about school, you get stressed about life, and it's just a whole big ball of stress. Um, also, another big stressor could be sports. A lot of athletes, before their event or before their game or their match or what have you, they could feel a lot of anxiety and stress building up because they want to do good, they want to perform well because this is what you train for, this is what you practice for, and it all adds up in this moment. Um, the third question is, what are some good stressors? 
Uh, good stress is a stress that helps you perform better. And some of these good stressors do help you perform better. Um, it is good to be stressed about school and grades because it can push you to study and try harder. And it's also good to be stressed about the future because it motivates you to talk to people about it and to research about it. Um, what are some signs or signals that could help us know the difference between good stress and when it comes to being unhealthy stress? So one thing about good stress that doesn't happen in bad stress is that good stress motivates you to do something productive, like your test. If you're studying for your test because you're stressed about it, you're gonna exceed, you're gonna excel, you're gonna do so well on this test. However, that's the good stress. The bad stress feels like a fat man sitting on your chest. It gets hard to breathe. It, you feel worried. It's a stress that shuts you down instead of motivating to you, instead of motivating you to do what feels better, what feels right, and something productive, essentially. This picture is of the Yerkes Dodson Law. The Yerkes Dodson Law dictates that, dictates that performance increases with physiological or mental tension or stress, but only to a point. When levels of stress become too high, performance drops and sickness follows. As you can see, it is a very fine line from healthy to sick as it shows in this visual. Typically, we think of too much stress manifesting as high feelings or emotions, but stress can also play a huge factor in how our mind and body operates. When too much stress builds up, you may encounter many physical or emotional health problems as well as it can have impacts on the brain's development as well. For example, back to our water bottle in the beginning, if you hold on to the water bottle for too long, it is going to cause some problems. So take a look at this picture. On the bottom, you'll see a line for um, as, in, as stress increases from left to right. So kind of in the middle would be a decently high level of stress. And then on the left-hand side, that is how your performance increases. So as your stress increases a little bit more and more and more, up to the top where it says peak performance, that is where you are at your best. But as you'll notice, it is a very fine line right down the middle there to the left, um, you know, is still some healthy stress with decent performance. Up to the top is the peak performance. But then as you get going on to the right, as you go over that hill, um, you start feeling maybe fatigued or exhausted, stress overload. So it's a very fine line between your peak performance of having healthy stress versus being, um, being sick with stress. So we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along. If you don't deal with stress, the health problems can stay with you and worsen over the course of time. Let's take a look at some of the long-term effects that stress can have on the body. Cramming for a test? Trying to get more done than you have time to do? Stress is a feeling we all experience when we are challenged or overwhelmed. But more than just an emotion, stress is a hardwired physical response that travels throughout your entire body. In the short term, stress can be advantageous, but when activated too often or too long, your primitive fight or flight stress response not only changes your brain, but also damages many of the other organs and cells throughout your body. Your adrenal gland releases the stress hormones cortisol, epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, and norepinephrine. As these hormones travel through your bloodstream, they easily reach your blood vessels and heart. Adrenaline causes your heart to beat faster and raises your blood pressure, over time causing hypertension. Cortisol can also cause the endothelium or inner lining of blood vessels to not function normally. Scientists now know that this is an early step in triggering the process of atherosclerosis or cholesterol plaque buildup in your arteries. Together, these changes increase your chances of a heart attack or stroke. When your brain senses stress, it activates your autonomic nervous system. Through this network of nerve connections, your big brain communicates stress to your enteric or intestinal nervous system. Besides causing butterflies in your stomach, this brain-gut connection can disturb the natural rhythmic contractions that move food through your gut, leading to irritable bowel syndrome 
and can increase your gut sensitivity to acid, making you more likely to feel heartburn. Via the gut's nervous system, stress can also change the composition and function of your gut bacteria, which may affect your digestive and overall health. Speaking of digestion, does chronic stress affect your waistline? Well, yes. Cortisol can increase your appetite. It tells your body to replenish your energy stores with energy-dense foods and carbs, causing you to crave comfort foods. High levels of cortisol can also cause you to put on those extra calories as visceral or deep belly fat. This type of fat doesn't just make it harder to button your pants. It is an organ that actively releases hormones and immune system chemicals called cytokines that can increase your risk of developing chronic diseases such as heart disease and insulin resistance. Meanwhile, stress hormones affect immune cells in a variety of ways. Initially, they help prepare to fight invaders and heal after injury, but chronic stress can dampen the function of some immune cells, make you more susceptible to infections, and slow the rate you heal. Want to live a long life? You may have to curb your chronic stress. That's because it has even been associated with shortened telomeres, the shoelace tip ends of chromosomes that measure a cell's age. Telomeres cap chromosomes to allow DNA to get copied every time a cell divides without damaging the cell's genetic code. And they shorten with each cell division. When telomeres become too short, a cell can no longer divide and it dies. As if all that weren't enough, Chronic stress has even more ways it can sabotage your health, including acne, hair loss, headaches, muscle tension, difficulty concentrating, fatigue, and irritability. So what does all this mean for you? Your life will always be filled with stressful situations, but what matters to your brain and entire body is how you respond to that stress. If you can view those situations as challenges you can control and master, rather than as threats that are insurmountable, you will perform better in the short run and stay healthy in the long run. I think by now most of us know the many signs that may appear as your body experiences stress. However, as you look at this list, you may notice some symptoms that you weren't aware of. As you are taking a look at this list, let's quickly rehash what we've learned so far today. You know that stress can be good at times to help us get motivated or give us energy. However, long-term stress can be very detrimental on our mind, body, and emotional state. There is a fine line between healthy stress and unhealthy stress. We have discussed some of the long-term impacts of stress on your body over time. And now we have taken a look at some of the common symptoms or signs of stress. It is important to be able to realize when you are experiencing stress so you can take charge of it and take the steps necessary to reduce the symptoms. So let's take a look at some coping strategies. We are going to spend the remainder of the Tiger Day today doing a quick activity about coping strategies. Coping strat strategies are just simply ways to reset and manage difficult or stressful situations. I want you to pick three coping strategies to help you deal with stress that are comfortable for you and school appropriate. For example, for me, I would list pretty much anything related to music because I know that calms me. For others, that they may not enjoy that. Some people might list yoga or meditation while others may not feel comfortable with that. Please pick three coping strategies, strategies that fit for you. There are some listed on this slide here, but I also have put others in other pictures in your module for more ideas. I would also challenge you to pick at least one coping strategy that is something you could do right inside the classroom, such as the square breathe, breathing technique I have pictured on the slide, or another idea is like a small fidget toy that doesn't distract others. Again, there are more ideas for coping strategies in the classroom in the pictures on your module. So please pick three strategies, one being something that you can use in the classroom or like in a large crowded room, something that you could do quietly kind of to yourself. And then write or write, draw or de decorate the piece of paper that you've been given with these three strategies. So you should have a small like, um, just like quarter sized paper that you can draw and write on. And we are gonna be turning these in at the end. You may write your name on it if you choose to do so. We do plan on posting these up somewhere around the school. So if you want your name on it, go for it. If you don't, that's fine too. 
Um, teachers, we want you to do this activity also, so please make sure you got, grab a piece of paper too. Please turn in your copies, uh, your coping strategies paper to your homeroom teacher today. If you want to take a little extra time to finish your paper, you can turn your paper into the counseling office before spring break, but we do need these um, to us before spring break. Again, thanks everyone. Um, I enjoyed doing the lesson for you today. Hope you enjoyed it too. And I hope you enjoy doing your, um, creating your coping strategies paper to turn into us. All right, thank you.